worthless idols and could not protect them. Listen, O king, and I will tell of the second king of my story, Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Both foolish and wicked of equal measure. Enough. We still have our threefold walls with their battlements. And within our granaries, we have grain enough to endure a siege of ten years. But our watchmen have seen the Persians digging, my lord. They seem quite concerned about this, my king. Yes, yes, they will look to build a siege ramp against the city. But first, they must build a causeway across the moat. That alone will take months. In the meantime, let us feast and toast Marduk, the patron god of Babylon. Marduk! These cups have a taste. And I will not have it so. Bring me the golden vessels from the Temple of Jerusalem. But my king, is it wise to use the vessels? My king, these cups are considered sacred. Are they not, my Perhaps king? Perhaps in Jerusalem! By that pathetic desert deity of Judah. But here they are spoiled for our gods. And they would have me use them as I see fit. Bring them! Yes. You see these vessels? In Jerusalem, they were used for the worship of their God. Now, instead of the blood of bulls and rams, let them flow with foaming wine. For I am not a devourer of blood. I am a devourer of drink. <laughs> and choice fair. <laughs> to Marduk, the god of our city. Marduk! And to our idols of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Partake of our pleasures and protect our city. Whoever reads this and tells me what it means shall be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and be made third highest ruler in the kingdom. And all the king's wise men came in, but they could not interpret the inscription or tell the king what it meant. So Belshazzar became even more terrified. The Judean once told Nebuchadnezzar, your forefather, of his dreams. He succeeded when everyone else had failed. This man, Daniel, whom the king called Belteshazzar, he could tell you what this writing means. Does he still live? He does. 
bring him to me quickly, but do not harm him. We shall soon learn if this Hebrew can do as you say. Nothing, it would seem, is too sacred not to be profaned under the influence of wine. Nothing. How can I be of service, Highness? Are you Daniel? One of the exiles my father brought back from Judah. I am he. I am told you are able to give interpretations and solve difficult problems. If you can read the writing on that wall, you will be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold placed around your neck, and be made third highest ruler in the kingdom. Long ago, I told your forefather, Nebuchadnezzar, that I would speak to him only the truth, and that if he rather not hear it, he should ask me nothing. Perhaps it would be better if you asked me nothing. No. It is unseemly for a king to be baffled by a message in his own hall. No human hand has scribed it. No other tongue can interpret it. Tell me what it means. Be it for good or ill. Okay. The Most High God, give your father, Nebuchadnezzar, greatness and glory. But when his heart became arrogant, he was deposed from his throne and stripped of his glory until he acknowledged that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men. Even though you knew all this, you should have appealed to him. Instead, you set yourself up against the Lord of Heaven. You had the goblets of his temple brought to you and praised the gods of bronze and iron, wood and stone instead of him. These vessels were made for the service of the Most High, and you have used them to pour wine for your harlots. Would you humble the Almighty by desecrating his possessions? Would you bind him like a captive, and beat him like a slave? Would you pluck out his eyes and have him beg for scraps of food beneath your table? This you would do if you could, and the Almighty knows it. This is his answer to you, the Lord God who strike you down like an enemy. For he has bidden his angel to unsheath his sword. These, then, are the words he has written. Mene. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the scales and found wanting. Ah, Sim. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. This very night, your life will be demanded of you. And before the sun rises, your flesh will grow cold. Thus saith the Lord, your line is ended, your rule is over. Your kingship is no more. Is there nothing to be done? No. In your arrogance, you have doomed not only yourself, but your house, your line, your inheritance, your city, and your kingdom. Choose now where you will spend your last few hours. But knowing your fate, who now will love thee? 
who now will fear you? Will the least of your slaves comfort you? Or will they desert you? Seeking to avoid the fate which is yours. Let it be as I have commanded. Let this man be clothed in purple. A chain of gold placed around his neck. For I am not dead yet. Belshazzar of the Babylonians. Unharm me! Surrender or die! Never! <laughs> Send word to Cyrus, the city's taken in his name. As he is commanded, I shall assume the crown. <laughs> 